In this video, I'll tell you why it's getting harder to play war games in game stores, and what'll happen if game stores disappear. I'm still here in the office during this video, and I kind of suspect I might be for a while. They did finally remove the windows in the studio, and like now the window holes are all boarded up until the windows are refurbished off-site, and then, you know, brought back and replaced. I think the caution tape is a nice touch, though. Anyway, that's how that's going. Most people didn't enjoy the pandemic of the last few years. I know, I know, I'm coming in fast with the hot takes, but not only was it really difficult on people all over the world, and on some people unspeakably difficult, but it was also really hard on people's businesses, their livelihoods, right? Specifically, small businesses. Other than Warhammer retail stores, every other tabletop game store in the world is a small business. Even there, you know, the game stores that are chains that are out there, and there aren't too many of them, but there are, there are some, all of them are small businesses. Through the pandemic, some game stores actually thrived due to like curbside pickup and a lot of hobbyists having a lot of time on their hands and no place to go. But unfortunately, a lot of those game stores failed. You may have noticed this in your area as now you have fewer tabletop gaming stores nearby. You may not have any tabletop gaming stores uh, available near you now, or maybe you just never really did. We're pretty blessed with tabletop gaming stores here in the American Midwest. I think it's because of the cold, if, you have, if I have to be honest. But there are fewer than there were before. Obviously, we can order things online these days. In that sense, hobby gaming stores aren't as much of a necessity as they used to be. Before the internet, you either had to, like, you know, travel to a hobby store to buy supplies, whether it was in your town or maybe, honestly, much farther away, or order via mail, like with a stamp, right? You know, or maybe via phone. These options were neither fast nor convenient, so hobby stores were great, and, and they're still great, especially when you need something quick, like a paint that you just ran out of, or something like that. But for many people, game stores are important for other reasons. It's where they play these games. For some folks, they have groups that they play games with in basements or spare rooms or garages, you know, whatever. And in the UK and Europe, uh, wargaming clubs, where you kind of like pay dues to play at a facility that's not a store and it's only open on certain days, that kind of stuff. They're very popular over there in the UK and Europe. But over here, we don't really have wargaming clubs, although I wish we did. Uh, so if you can't really play at home, then you play at stores. And now there seem to be fewer than there were. There's this concept in sociology, the concept of the third place. And it really applies to tabletop gaming stores, in my opinion. As an aside, there's also the third space theory, and though I initially thought that they were the same, after doing a bit of research, they're technically different. Uh, third place is more about social identity, and third space is more about cultural identity, and it's a whole thing, but I'll be sticking with third place theory for the rest of this discussion. Third place theory has nothing to do with how well you did at a tournament. Instead, it's about a place out in the world that you can go that's not the first place, like your home, you know, where you live, or the second place, your job, where you work. Instead, it's a place that you go to, like, socialize, and hang out, talk, all those kinds of things. It's a place you go to to see and kind of catch up with old friends, right? Uh, meet and like talk to newer friends and potentially even make new friends. It's more than just a shop to buy miniatures and paint. So game stores should definitely be considered third places. And due to the aftermath of the pandemic, we're seeing not only fewer game stores, we're also seeming to see fewer gaming events in the stores that are left as well. Like every store owner that I've talked to, and admittedly, I've not talked to them all, there are thousands, uh, but everyone that I've talked to has told me that 
Those sales are still fine, you know, not as good as they were in 2021 or 2022 when people were stuck in at home, of course, you know. They're they're finding fewer and fewer people attending Wargamer events in their stores. Why is this? Mostly, I think the pandemic showed a lot of folks that they could set up and play games at home with friends. Sure, you're not going to get that whole kind of mythical pickup game thing that people constantly bring up in the comments of YouTube videos frequently, you know, when trying to justify only ever playing games, workshop games and nothing else. But there are seemingly more and more people playing in basements, spare rooms, garages, etc. And they're not finding a great reason to head back to the stores. I know that the big benefits to playing at home or, you know, at somebody else's home are, of course, easy access to snacks and drinks, including adult beverages, if you're into that. And most stores I've been in don't sell beer or spirits, which makes sense with children around. Uh, back in the day when we all had uh, fewer responsibilities, our gaming group used to make kind of like a day of it in the warmer months play for hours and hours, and then take a break and cook out and have some beers and all that kind of stuff. After the brats and the burgers, it was back to wargaming. It's great to have those options. But the big problem is that those groups can become very kind of insular, you know, and in some situations, even stagnant. It gets very difficult to add new people to the kind of play rotation, unless you meet these new folks in some other situation, you probably won't really meet too many new players at your house, you know, unless they've broken in, I suppose, uh, like you will at a store on a Saturday afternoon. There are some ways to find people online to play with, Discord servers, Facebook and things. Eh. But do you really want to invite a stranger over to your house for a first meeting and game, right? Or maybe play somewhere public. Sometimes this insular group dynamic is by design. You've been playing with the same group of close friends for like, I don't know, a decade or more, right? And adding to that group doesn't seem particularly necessary to you. But for, you know, some people, especially those who are getting into these games for the first time, they either need to become the kind of gaming advocate, pachow, and teach their other friends about wargaming to try to get them into it or somehow find others to game with. This is where the game stores can come into play. Pun intended. I really don't think that this is signaling any kind of a downturn in tabletop wargaming. On the contrary, people still love getting together socially to play at wargaming conventions, as, you know, proved by the ever-increasing numbers at big conventions like Adepticon, Nova Open, Las Vegas Open, and, like, many others as well. I just got back from Adepticon a few weeks ago, and it was slammed this year. I've seen estimates that it grew 20% this year over attendance last year, and after being there in the thick of it for five days, I don't doubt it. I just feel like the tabletop gaming stores are becoming less and less utilized as third places these days. In some situations, this again is by design. Games Workshops, Warhammer stores, right? They don't seem like a place that they want you to come to and play like they did back in the old days. They're mostly, at least here in the U.S., tiny, tiny retail spaces, and, and rarely have any kind of gaming tables at all. But most independent gaming stores seem to still want customers to come in and play. But as I said, it seems to be happening less and less. If we lose these game stores as third places, then my fear is it will actually start to have an impact on the overall wargaming hobby. For the most part, you are either generally introduced to and taught to play war games by a friend at someone's house, or you learn it at a store, watching others play and asking questions until you eventually start and build your own army and start getting, you know, like learning games in at the shop. Those are pretty much the two ways that people get into the tabletop wargaming hobby. Losing one of those two main avenues into tabletop wargaming could be very difficult for the hobby. 
Perhaps if you have a gaming group that plays at somebody's house or garage now, right? Try and play some games at a local store that you like you know, buying from, right? Maybe even try making it like an event or something, like a demo event or whatever. Let the store owner know and they can tell customers about it or maybe even hang a flyer and all that kind of stuff. And then folks might just kind of show up to check the game out. You might end up, over a period of time, fostering a larger wargaming presence in your area, which means more opponents for you. It might seem like we don't need tabletop gaming stores in this day and age due to, you know, online sales and 3D printing and all of that kind of stuff. But honestly, it would be a huge blow to wargaming specifically if local stores went away. Wargaming is what gets played at a lot of these stores and Magic the Gathering type stuff. Board gaming, RPGs, most of that seems to happen at somebody's house amongst a group of friends. But wargaming specifically... We, we still need stores, right? What do you think? Do you play in your local store? Do you appreciate it as a third place to hang out with friends and kind of get games in? Or did the pandemic send you into your basement or garage to play? Have you tried playing in stores again since the pandemic? Let me know all that and, you know, whatever else you might think down in the comments below. If you like this video, it would be a great favor to me if you would click the little thumbs up thingy down below at the like button. It helps out the channel. It helps out this video to get to more people. And hopefully some more people start coming back to stores. Uh, if you would like to see more videos like this every single Friday, click the subscribe button down below as well. And thanks for watching.